When the Bible's influence is strong in a society, it will affect all aspects of that culture in a positive way. The opposite is also true. When a society turns its back on God, it will begin to reflect evil in its cultural choices. Hello, my friends, and welcome to our sixth adult Sunday school lesson of the summer. This is the next to the last lesson as we study why we need the Bible. There are just two lessons left in this series, and they're addressed to how culture and business should be influenced by the Bible and believers of Christ. Well, I'm Paul Brooks, adult Sunday school teacher for the North Greensboro Church of God. In this video, I discuss with you the daily Bible readings that accompany summer lesson number six. Lesson number six is entitled, The Bible and Culture with the message that God calls his people to live by biblical values in a sinful culture. We have caught on to the theme of our study by now. The Bible speaks to or reveals God's will for everyone and everything. In this series, we're learning that God uses his word to speak to the individual, to the family, to society, to a sinful and lost culture, and even to our marketplace and businesses. The scriptures that we will study in the lesson this week are from several books of the Bible. They're in your quarterly, and I also posted them to our Facebook page for you yesterday. Our daily Bible readings are from the Old and New Testament and support this lesson and the scriptures we're studying this week. So last week we studied how the Bible speaks to society. This week we're studying how we believers live in a sinful culture. So it might help to understand the differences between society and culture. According to Merriam-Webster, the dictionary, a society is an organized group working together. It could be a state, a country, a region, a company, but it's a society organized group working together. A culture is defined as the customary beliefs or social forms and material traits of a group, usually within a society. It might be easier to explain it this way. If we made lists about the two, we would put rules and regulations under society and we would put personal values under culture. Laws would go under society, but attitudes would go under culture. This week's daily readings reveal how important culture is to God, or more directly, how we as his followers are to behave within a culture. These daily readings help us to better understand why God would ask us, are my followers influencing culture? or are they being influenced by culture? Well, we began our daily Bible readings on Monday with Genesis chapter 11, verses one to nine, and we read of a rebellious culture. After the flood, the descendants of Noah multiplied and spread out into nations building great cities and societies. Their culture developed into a prideful one as they saw what they had built and what they had done. Their pride and rebellion manifested in the great city and tower that they were building, a tower to reach unto heaven. Well, we read in verses six to nine that God put down this rebellious culture. The majority culture today also tries to put God down and assert the authority of man. Don't forget, God resists the prideful and gives grace to the humble. God is the ultimate authority. On Tuesday, we read a passage from Numbers chapter 33 in verses 50 to 56 about being called to be a sanctified culture. Remember, God called Israel to be his sanctified people. We read in our quarterly for this daily Bible reading that as believers in Christ, we too have been called by God to be his holy or sanctified people. 
In 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 15 to 16, we learn that God has called us and he has called us to be holy because he is holy. Now we can move this forward in relation to the church, the community of believers. The culture of the church should be a sanctified culture. Wednesday, we read from the book of Malachi, chapter 4, verses 4 to 6, about God's call for renewal. God's telling the Israelites and us that he has called us for a holy purpose. He's merciful to those who choose to follow him, but he is just in the exercise of judgment against those who are prideful and who reject him. God is merciful in that he will provide us many opportunities to follow him, but he will assuredly be just bringing judgment to those who reject him. Thursday, today, we will read a passage from the book of Matthew chapter 6 verses 19 to 24 with a warning to beware of worldly values. The message in this passage is pretty straightforward and is given directly in verse 24. You cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon is material wealth and possessions. So what God's saying is you cannot serve him and the culture that's created by man and pursue those things that are valued in the culture. You have to serve God first and influence the culture for God. Tomorrow on Friday, we'll read a passage from 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 to 12. And we learn that a righteous person is chosen for a holy culture, but not the culture we find here on earth. A righteous person will be vexed by an unrighteous culture. But in verse 9, we read very clearly that the Lord knoweth how to deliver us from temptation and evil. It's up to us just to follow him. But this passage makes it equally plain that God will not suffer the unjust, the followers of the flesh, the presumptuous and self-willed, and the doers of evil. We are to live in this culture as who we are the chosen, chosen to live in the kingdom of God. Finally, on Saturday, we'll read our final passage for the week, and that comes from the first John chapter 2, verses 18 to 23, telling us that believers are anointed to discern spiritual deception. John tells us in verse 19 that there are already many antichrists in the world, and he goes on to tell us that these antichrists will deny that Jesus is the Christ, and they will deny the Father and the Son. But believers have the Holy Spirit, who along with the Word can discern and reveal to us deceiving voices. So listen to the Spirit and go to the Word to test out doctrine or preaching that just does not seem right. Well, what do we take away from our daily Bible readings as we move on into our lesson this week? Well, biblical standards and values exceed those of an unbelieving culture. We're to avoid being influenced by sinful culture but with love for God and love and concern for our fellow man, we are to influence that culture so that it is more in sync with biblical standards and guidance. I want to thank you for continuing this study with us here at North Greensboro Church of God. This summer, uh, in this study about why we need the Bible. I hope that the daily Bible readings from God's Word, along with the observations I've prepared and shared with you in this video, will help your understanding of the message for this week. God calls his people to live by biblical values in a sinful culture. Now, I'll be posting another video later this week to provide additional context and background for your study of this lesson. 
So thank you for viewing this video. And as always, I pray for you and your family's safety and for God's blessings upon you.